at that time, I would go around to different editorial houses. I had a list from uh, the phone book. And they would say, we don't hire women because you can't carry a lot of cans because we don't want to have to watch our language. La, la, la. And although there were women working in the industry, I never ran into them. Nobody ever introduced me or told me about them. And I did have, for maybe three years, I didn't meet any women doing what I was doing. Wow. Yeah. The first cut, cut, the first cut, the first cut, cut, first, the first, first cut, 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 cut. I'll just teach you simple cuts to start with. Welcome back to Craft Truck. In the cut, Lindsay Klingman, picture editor. Welcome. Thank you. You know, I was in the trenches. Armand Film Services did everything from industrials, which was um, things that were sponsored by big companies like IBM or and, and, and Monsanto did a wonderful animated film on color and Golf Western did something on golfing. And you're, cu and you're cutting, you're in the editorial department. Now, I'm, what I'm doing is I walk in and they say, First, they hired me because they said to me, oh, we need a girl around to answer the phone, make coffee. Oh, that's oh nice. and cut the negative and read the soundtracks. Now, I knew nothing. You had to go through the process where you learned how to mark things, how to tape them, put them in bins and takes. No, and the first thing I learned was to cut negative, and I made mistakes, but uh, nobody seemed to notice because it was a very quick cut film. And when I walked in the first day of film, they said, this is the negative. Don't put your fingers on it, and this is the picture. Don't get any ashes on it. Because everyone smoked. Everybody it. smoked, right, including right, me. Right, right. So I got on this film, Hearts and Minds, which was produced by the producer of Easy Rider, Last Picture Show. The director was Peter Davis, who was a, um, a journalistic documentary filmmaker for, I think it was CBS. And I had a co editor who was an old friend of Peter, Susan Martin, and me. and. Um, they shot for a year on this film. It won an Academy Award. It won an Academy Award for? Best Documentary. So you've now edited two Academy Award nominated documentaries. Right. Now, Hearts both and about, Minds both was... Both about Vietnam. Right. Very different. Very different. Because Hearts and Minds is more about the mentality that led America to do this. And what aspects of the American character uh, permitted it? to go on to happen. And the film um, had been paid for by Columbia Pictures, who had done released, you know, Paper Moon. I mean, great, cla last picture show. Mm -hmm. Great classic movies. And they gave Bert Schneider just carte blanche. Do what you want. They didn't know they were getting a documentary. They didn't know they were getting an anti-war documentary. They just, they didn't know. And when they saw it, they went berserk. And when we were at the Cannes Film Festival showing it, they actually came in before it screened and cut the logo off. And luckily, Bert Schneider had a kid in his camp cabin who was a camper, and Bert was the counselor, and they formed a lifelong friendship. And that kid was loaded. He had tons of money, and he bought the film from Columbia, and that's how it got released. It was a very exciting story. <laughs> well, my question to you is, how, you're editing this documentary. How do you, you I mean, you obviously have to start somewhere. Well, I, I, listen, they shot for over a year. They had access to every piece of stock footage there was, even more than I had because the other film was four years earlier. And all the networks were holding on to all their footage and the, so we could access all of it. Right. So we had well over a million, like a million and a half feet of film. Finished product being 12,000, okay? Our first cut million, was 10 hours. You had, you, know? you had a million and a half feet of film. Yeah, yeah. And you know what helps in these situations is transcripts. So some of the editing is actually done on paper and then given to us, and then we have to figure out how to tell a story with these pieces. Right. Because really documentaries are the best way to learn. Right. You have to decide what goes in front of what for what purpose. <laughs> Started working as an assistant in a commercial house, and I worked there for two years, and it was one of the best commercial places 
in New York. And now what are you doing there? Well, I would go to dailies. Now, this is the interesting thing. I go to dailies, and there was one commercial that involved a very long shot, but also a long shot that moved in on a person on a ladder. And I remember sitting through 19 takes of this, and people around me are going, oh, that's too slow. That's great. I don't like the light there. And I'm looking at these nine, 90, 19 25-second uh, shots, takes. and I don't see any difference between anything, because I didn't know what to look for, because I had an uneducated eye. So I, I often think about that. Like, I didn't have a clue what they were talking I was writing, but I didn't know what they were saying. It took time for me to get it. So you're cutting, you're cutting one flow of the cuckoo's nest. Uh, how, long, how long of a process was that? Well, it, 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 there was no cutting done while they were shooting. Right. Rush didn't want anyone touching his film. Oh, really? Yeah. And he would hang out mostly with uh, Richard and then come around to my room and Shelley's room. I think it took about five, six months. I really don't remember. How did you break Until it? the mix. How did you break up the editorial? Well, I, was, I started out doing the things like the meeting with Dr. Spivy. Yep. Uh, group things that were wonderful uh, uh, scenes by the way not the group therapy no 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 no. I mean just the, just the, the over the uh, across the desk yeah where it's well and with a Jack bit. And, and him but yeah. also with the other shrinks discussing whether he's mentally ill or not right I mean stuff like that because right. that was more documentary but then I started doing oh the basketball game you know stuff like that right right but then I started doing other so did stuff. you actually cut the basketball game when when um, I'm sorry the chief walks over slowly and sort of drops it in and then he just slowly sort of gets into the game. That was all you? I don't think it was all me. But... You... I think there were... I, you know, I, sorry, I can't remember. It's okay. I, I know I did quite a bit of it. It's a beautiful sequence. It's a beautiful movie. The whole movie's beautiful, but I'm just... I was, I, I was very happy on that movie. Right. <laughs> what did you pick up from cutting One Flew Over the Cougar? Well, Milos is a fantastic person in an editing room, and he, his, his voice is always in my mind, you know. Um, uh, just what you can do and what you can't do. Try it, try this, try that, which I always did anyway. Try everything, try everything. He wanted to see everything. Got an idea, make it work. If you can't, keep trying. You know, and then when I would make a mistake, and he was in the room seeing it, he'd go, oh. And for the rest of my life, when I would make a mistake in editing, I mean, just a technical mistake. Right. I'd hear that, oh, get real impatient with my sound. You know, he would say, oh, that'll never work. Oh, it's nice, it's good, it's good. I mean, he was just a, a pleasure to work with. Try this, look at this. This frame to this frame, what do you think? And he would be, yeah, what about that frame to that frame? Okay, try it. Show me. He was open. He was, but he had a lot of ideas. And it was a pleasure to work with him. I did three other films, two other films with him. Was the ending of the movie always meant to be the ending, the way it sets yeah. up this chief sort of running yeah, off? Yeah, now I worked on the ending, and it was good. And then I started playing with the arrangement of shots one day putting this shot in front of this instead of after this, and just playing with them. And at some point, Milos walked in and he looked and he said, that's it, it's great, the movie works. If the end works, the movie works, that's it. So that was... And you guys never changed another frame? We didn't change that, no. But what happened, this is very interesting, was you know how the Indian runs? Yes. Now that shot was lost in the laboratory. They didn't find the negative. They couldn't find the negative. So you had to pull it and from that the shot was always, you know, going to be the titles. It was a very long shot in terms of uh, how long it lasted. And yeah, it's the work picture. And um, you they, actually had to pull it from the print. You had to pull a Duke Nug from the print. And they couldn't do what they could do today. Right. I'm sure they have on the CDs now. I, I haven't looked at a recent one. But at that time, you could kind of, if you were hip at all to filmmaking. You could kind of see it was a little different quality than the rest yeah, of the Yeah, it's funny. I, I thought it was always a choice. I, uh, you know, Were you aware of that? 
A little bit. I mean, it looks a little darker, a little darker and a Grainier. little more mushy or grainy or yeah. whatever, you know. But, no, that wasn't but I didn't, the choice. Now that you mention it, it's no. really, that's really funny. <laughs> Man, oh, Man on the Moon also with Milos. Yeah. That, now, that's an interesting picture because of the ending. 